Hey everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Mehul and in this video, let's just take a look how we can work with Ionic plus React. Now this is a pretty deadly combination. Ionic always goes with Angular if you think about it, if you, you know, if you're talking to anyone, Ionic is usually powered with Angular. But now Ionic is separating its core APIs with the layered, that is your UI APIs, UI libraries. And now we can finally use Ionic plus React the official way. So let's set up a project with Ionic, Capacitor and React. Let's get into it. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory called React Ionic in which we're going to set up our project. Let's just CD into this. Now this is because this is a React project. Let's just set it up first of all by saying create React app. And I'm going to name this project um, basically nothing because we were in the correct folder. So I'm going to say create, create React app that is taught, which means that initialize this project in current folder. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this a TypeScript project, which is going to create a TypeScript React project instead of regular JavaScript. Now, Ionic recommends this because they do ship with all those TypeScript definition files, which kind of makes your experience very good. And if you're coming from Angular background, then Angular obviously works with TypeScript out of the box. So another thing I just want to do is just use NPM here by saying use, use NPM, which is going to use NPM instead of yarn. Now you might not need this flag right here if you just have NPM on your systems, but I have NPM and yarn both. So um, I'm going to switch to NPM. Now the reason for that is because we're going to make use of something known as Ionic Capacitor to actually build this project for real devices, which internally uses NPM. So it does not really ask even ask for the choice. So that is the reason at the moment. So all right, once it's done, so you're gonna get a message like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and install some more dependencies. Um, the first one being obviously React package from Ionic, which is going to give us access to all those components and stuff. We are gonna also go ahead and install React Router for um, routing purposes in our app obviously, and uh, Ionic supports it at the moment. We also need React Router DOM with it. Plus we need um, the types for these so that we have uh, TypeScript support, React Router DOM, there we go. And we could just pretty much save them as well. Once we do that, I'm gonna fire off my code editor and I'm gonna say npm start as well, which is gonna start a local development server for us. And there we go, here's the VS code and uh, Here's our React project right here, which is uh, well, which is basically just a regular re React project at the moment. And let's see how we can convert it into an Ionic app now. So here's how our app looks like at the moment, just like a regular React app. And I'm gonna replace this with this code right here, which is provided by Ionic. Now all the code is, the link is in the description for the GitHub repository. If you want to check it out, go ahead and check it out. And it's save. So once we change our app.tsx file to this particular code, where you can see that we are importing some components from Ionic React and making use of them, we're gonna see that we pretty much get the feeling of Ionic application here, right? So we see that we get our regular Ionic feeling with those all those cards and stuff. And we could pretty much just create a debugger just about the size of mobile application so that it kind of looks like that, right? All right, pretty cool. So now let's just create a quick React app pretty quickly here. All right, so let's see how our app looks like at the moment. So you see that we just have regular stuff. Ion, Ion app from Ion React. We have router uh, from our React Router DOM package. Now we are just serving single component on home, which is actually a tabbed component. So we see that we are creating tabs just like Ionic way. Ionic outer outlet defines how these tabs should behave. Um, tab 1 should give us tab 1 component, tab 2 component, tab 3 component, which are pretty much similar components, just the difference being in their um, header right here, which has the ion title of tab 1, uh, regular title tab 1, we could pretty much say it right here, tab 2, tab 2, tab 3, so on and so forth, right? So, yep, there we go. So, yeah, other than that, they are pretty much similar. To each other right so once we have that in place what we want is we want this whole project to run on an actual device right and for that what we need to do is we need to add 
something known as a capacitor now you might see this directory right here i'm going to remove this you're going to not see it um, at your build so you should be able to see something like this at the moment so what you want to do next is first of all create an ionic.config.json file here which is, whole, which is going to hold our ionic configuration file i'm going to put the, gonna give it a name of react ionic project and it needs a type as well so if you just pass in anything random here and say ionic capacitor c-a-p-a-c-i-t-o-r at ios hit enter it's going to throw an error that it's invalid project so your project must be of angular ionic angular ionic one or custom in our case it's going to be custom right here because um well yeah our project is custom right now it's going to pull down some dependencies so just let them download all right so once it's done you're going to get this error saying that it could not find this assets directory so what we want to do is actually we want to serve this from our build folder instead of www and we don't have a build folder we would get a build folder when we build the project right here by saying npm run build but we want the capacitor to do it on running so i'm gonna say that this is going to be an ionic build script which is going to fire first of all npm run build which is going to create a build folder for us and pretty much place all our html css javascript everything in it and once that's done i want ionic capacitor to copy those assets into our io ios file right Right, so at the moment, first of all, we need an iOS folder here. So we're gonna change this from build to public just so that we can get this iOS folder right here. So I'm gonna add this. And this time it's going to find a build folder. You see that not really a build folder or, um, you know, an HTML file here, which it wanted right here. But this is not the final state, right? Because we want to serve our directory from build files, not this file, because it does not really contain any JavaScript or anything at all, right? So anyway, we just got an, got back our iOS folder. So um, yeah, we are pretty good to go there. So once it's done, we're gonna fire off our build script, which is this Ionic build script right here. And we're gonna say now NPM, not really NPM, I'm gonna say Ionic, uh, capacitor run iOS which is going to fire off this script first of all let's see what happens so when I've entered this command you see the script is run npm run ionic build which in turn runs npm run build and ionic capacitor copy which in turns first of all run react scripts build which is going to create an optimized build folder which is going to contain all of our HTML CSS JavaScript all those files so you see once the build is done we get all of our files here and it also says us that it's opening the xcode workspace from where we would be able to run it on a real actual device right so you see our build folder looks good now and xcode is open on my screen now inside xcode i pretty much just have to go ahead and select iphone 10 here and hit this build button so it would start building it and uh, it would start the application once it's deployed also don't forget to change your directory here from public to build because your files are served from build not from public so let's just go ahead and run it one more time and once you do that you should get a familiar view so if i click on this tab one you see that we get a just a regular title tab one and we obviously do not have those safe area views in place that is why this is happening but you know you get the idea tab two shows me pretty much the similar thing we could go ahead and select anything feels native uh, looks native and there we go our react application right here just working just fine with ios so yeah that's pretty much it for ionic plus react and if you like this video don't forget to subscribe press the bell icon and like the video itself and i'll see you then in the next one